The cameras are far away enough that you can't see how crusty my nose is, eh? Yeah. Kira Dave, how's it going? This week on the Wholesome Half Hour, we're talking all about working around obstacles, bad teachers, bad classmates, all sorts of things. You know, it's totally normal to get thrown with heaps of issues at school. And we're also answering all your questions. We've got a couple of questions here. One of them is about university entrance, that complicated mess that it is. I know a lot of people are like in the, going through that process at the moment, so I thought we'll break that down. And we're also answering some questions about university hall applications. Yeah, awesome. And we're gonna get this out of the way now. <laughs> I lost my voice. I've been really, really sick, so so sorry, Tim, that you have to listen to this. But good, good job. I, I commend your effort on coming down here. You could have bailed. <laughs> could have bailed. Could've. I appreciate the commitment to the whole semester. I'm sure the audience appreciates your commitment as I well. I hope they do. Cool. Um, let's talk about our first little, oh, our first little topic. Our only, our only little topic here. Um, Obstacles. So, like, yeah. what are the kind of what are the kind of obstacles that you reckon people face in school? I will be back momentarily. Sierra has to do the classic first five minute wholesome half hour tweak, but <laughs> I I feel like oh, we're good, we're uh, good. one of the most common ones, or at least um, not necessarily like bad teachers, but teachers that you maybe not don't necessarily vibe with a hundred percent. And you know, unfortunately. You know, once we have a teacher, we have that teacher for the year, um, for better or worse. And so we kind of There's have to... There's not too much you can do about it, yeah. generally speaking. If, if you're lucky enough to have a different teacher that runs, like, the same stream, you might mm. be lucky enough to be able to, like, dip into a different class, but the chances of it really happening are quite unlikely. Right. Yeah. And it quite often, I think, as well, schools don't generally like to do that. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I think... Having a teacher that you potentially like don't learn very feel that you learn very well off and stuff because yeah. you know um, just as we all have different kind of things that we feel we're quite suited to, teachers have ways that they teach that is also their own way. Yeah. Um, so I guess first off, my piece of advice for I guess someone who has a teacher that they don't necessarily vibe with is to really like make sure that you are. Um, asking questions and stuff in class because I think quite often as well students are too scared to ask a question and they say oh you know my teacher gets put out if I ask questions or stuff like that but it's like that's their job yeah you know? like that's that's why you're there and uh, most teachers do enjoy being asked questions because yeah. it shows that you're, you're listening, listening to what they're yeah, saying and 100%. you're engaging with it and like as a teacher or as a like, I'm not sure if you've ever done like public speaking before it's very awkward just like talking at people and receiving no feedback yes so like having like asking questions is definitely a good way of making like essentially making the teacher like talk about what you are unsure of yeah and you can learn that and it's also just like generally a good thing most teachers will appreciate that yeah and I think as well like just just on that note of you mm. know talking to a room with essentially no little to no feedback mm. is like because of that sometimes uh, teachers are sort of like stabbing in the dark a little bit as well like yeah. they don't like if you don't ask they don't know that you don't know mm. it. No, or definitely. you're having difficulty understanding it and if they're used to just seeing you give them like a blank look most of the time, mm. like they don't know if that's your listening face or not. Yeah. Like. No, definitely. It's and um, you get a lot at university as well. You get lecturers who like engaging with the class. Yeah, um, and I think to be honest, I think I found it more obvious at uni because a lot of lecturers and even tutors mm. aren't necessarily trained to have a bunch of people just stare at them mm. while they speak at them. Yeah. So you don't. Under, or sometimes notice how potentially awkward it can be for the person in the front until you've like sat in a tutorial yeah. with a tutor who's asked a question and there's and 20 just people just silence. It happens at them. all the time. It, it, it genuinely happens all the time. And it happens more in certain subjects than others, but we won't oh. get into that. Yeah. <laughs> That's a different As someone thing who stuff. studies multiple subjects, yeah, you, no, can, yeah. you can tell who likes to talk. But I think on, on, on that as well, like, I think sometimes we forget that. Or I think when I was at high school, I had the thought and that, you know, adults have their whole lives together. They know what mm. they're doing. They're so confident. But, like, you don't... I think so students sometimes forget or don't fully understand the full power that they have mm. over teachers and stuff sometimes no, and how your responses will dictate how the teacher does um, yeah. respond and teach. Um, because I think quite often teachers will feel that discomfort, but they're trained not to show it or yeah. they're 
trained well, they don't want to, to sort of minimize yeah, yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. That's but it doesn't it doesn't stop them from feeling it. You know, you oh, don't know you don't yeah. know what They're their internal human, right? yeah, exactly. You don't know what their internal state mm. is like. And I think sometimes having that understanding there um, does help it quite a bit. Um, a recommendation I always have though is always be friendly to your teachers. Yeah. I don't. And this was something I did try to carry all through high school, mind you. This isn't something I'm yeah. saying in hindsight. Um, teachers will respond far better to you if you're friendly to them or if you have a good relationship you have to go, with them. You don't have to go over the top. But no, just no, like, no, Just the all. common courtesies, you know, if you if you see them in the hall and they're by themselves, yeah. you just say hi as you're walking past. Just, just like... Just be courteous. The, base, just the basic things you'd do if you saw, like, one of... You know, like an acquaintance? Acquaintance. Acquaintance, like, like, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, just like say hello yeah. say at the end of the class when you're leaving, say thank you. Just those basic things. It yeah. makes a big difference. No, it 100% does. And um, like even when I was leaving one of my lectures the other day, mm. um, my lecturer was standing outside. He just said, oh, you know, if anyone has any questions, I'll wait outside mm. for anyone. And as I walked out, I didn't have a question, but as I walked past, I was like, well, I'm not just going to walk past. I was like, oh, thank you, as I left. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, oh, yeah, like all good, you know. And it's yeah, just yeah, like yeah. just little things like that people really appreciate. No, they and do. It's, it's not like a teacher's pet thing or anything. It's just being a nice human being. No, no, definitely. Um, I guess if we wanted to, let's, let's, like, I guess that's some like good general advice. Yep. If we were, say, you you have got in an unfortunate spot and you are in a situation where, for whatever reason, like the relationship with you and your teacher isn't mm. working very well. Um, what are some things, let's start off with, what are the things you can do yourself? Like, where are the common, point, yeah. common points of conflict? What's usually going on there? I think um, quite often, I mean, teachers are reactive, I think. Mm. Generally, students start stuff. No, Sorry, I guys. But um, I think if you are feeling, really, really, 100% feeling that whatever is going on in class um, or the environment isn't working for you, yeah. um, take aims to really take that study into your own hands. Mm. Um, so many schools these days um, do have very almost self-driven learning environments. If you've got periods where you just have to um, be on a laptop or a computer, if you kind of got a little bit of free study, um, rather than using... Pop down to Mac is. Yeah, as you do. Um, rather than using that time to maybe sit in class complaining about how much you don't vibe with your teacher, yeah. like use that time to understand the concepts mm. in your own way if you need to. I think um, don't take a back seat to it. Don't take a defeatist attitude to it. Yeah. Um, if it's not working for you, you have to work on your own to make it work. Mm. No, definitely. Um, do you think when... Like when when students have bad relation or not yeah when students have like bad or problematic relationships with teachers, what do you think is like one of the most like common like issues? Do you think it's often like a communication thing? Or I think I think it definitely could be a communication thing, um, and also I think if it's sort of an animosity that kind yeah. of builds over mm. the year. Um, so it, it's it like one might of those be a bunch of little things. It's, it's like one of those situations where, you know, you start in like a little shallow hole, but as like the year goes yeah. on, you kind of like dig the hole deeper and it's yeah. harder to get out. And I think, I think because we are in term three now, mm. um, anyone who's listening or watching this that mm. is sort of relating to this quite hard, you know, yeah. it might not, not pass the point of no return, but we're in term three now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's... Um, if you, if you wanted to kind of um, make a better relationship with your teacher, you still 100% can. I'm not saying that that's not a thing at all, um, but it would definitely be easier to sort out earlier in the year. Yeah, it's definitely <laughs> something to keep in mind there. But just because you have, like, maybe you've gotten off to a bad, bad start with the teacher, it's never too late to, you know, start, you know, just being the yeah. basic things we talked about not too yeah. long ago, just being yeah. polite, all that stuff makes a big yeah. difference. And I think on that note as well, though, because it is a bit further in the year now, mm. Um, if it's something that has built over the year, it really it might mean that you might have gaps in your own knowledge mm. because of it. Like, because essentially you've spent this whole year under a teacher that you potentially haven't been listening slash learning from. Yeah. Um, so it means that if you haven't been doing this independent study, mm. that you've essentially got nothing to fall back on. Yeah. So um, it would also be really useful for anyone in this kind of situation, I feel, to actually um, go back on their own learning yeah. and see where they are mm -hmm. and where they potentially like should be or um, 
we're expecting to be at this point of the year. Yeah. But what what would your advice be, I think? I think it would definitely, yeah, it's definitely along those lines. Just, yeah, think about where you are and think about, try to work out, because I feel like a lot of the time when people are like, oh, I don't like so-and-so, they don't really, they kind of just say it, but they don't really, like, think Engage about with it. the thought. Or, like, yeah. yeah. I, I'd, I'd encourage you to, like, just, like, just spend, like, 10 minutes and think about, like, what what is it about? Are you not... Are you not understanding when they explain things in class or uh, do you not like the format, the way they run their class? I'd encourage you to kind of spend some time and think about that. Yeah. Try to identify like what specific, like what specifically like, yeah. makes you um, feel ad- adverse to that particular teacher. And then based off there, you can kind of make a better decision on what to do. Like if you're not completely understanding some of the concepts, maybe you should start asking some questions in class or yeah. after class. Yeah. Um, if you're unsure about, if you've just got some holes in your knowledge, maybe you just need to have a chat with them and ask what's what's up with these yeah. like two, three things. And maybe those are the two or three things that are making it the rest of the class tricky. Yeah. And once you like fix those things, everything else goes more smoothly. Yeah, definitely. And I think, yeah, really, that's actually a really good point is identifying exactly what it is, is the problem because it's very easy to look at it from a very sort of vague, holistic way and be like, oh, I don't like this teacher or mm. something like that. Yeah. And, um, but really not engaging with that thought anymore and asking yourself why. Because if you don't ask yourself why, you really can't begin to take aims to clarify it mm. or to fix it, Yeah, I think. yeah. No, definitely. To, yeah, the easiest, the easiest way to know like, what needs to be fixed is to like, be yep. able to like, very yeah. clearly identify cool. the issue. And usually, usually it can be done um, if you want some help, you know, talk to some of the other people in that class. Yeah. But yeah, it's usually not too much of a challenge. I guess um, you do get the occasional scenario, and this is by far the very small minority of scenarios where, like, teachers aren't behaving properly for whatever reason, or they yeah. aren't teaching the class properly, yeah. or something, something more fundamental is going wrong than just, like, you're unable to understand yeah. what's going on. Yeah, what no, that's, you, that's something that can happen as yeah, well. It can happen. Um, what do you think is the best way to deal with that scenario as well? Um, I personally feel that um, having a clear um, communication about it, I think, uh, yeah. whether that be first with your parents, uh, with your dean, with yeah. the principal if you need to, yeah. of your schools, like, if you have that kind of relationship, I think um, just sitting around and complaining about it, but mm. doing nothing about it um, is very... Pa- it's kind of pointless. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so <laughs> passive. Yeah. Um, so I think if you genuinely are really, really struggling, and potentially if you've got classmates that agree or something like that, mm. um, s- speak to your parents if you don't want to address it directly. You know, get yeah. ask them to sort of sort something out for you. Um, or yeah, speak speak to someone within the school because that's yeah, yeah. doing nothing about it isn't gonna make yeah. it all better. I definitely point out a couple of things. A lot of the times, we, even when teachers are doing things that they shouldn't be doing, whatever that may be, they're often like unaware. Cause yeah. So like you have to like find a way of pointing it out to them. And obviously, before doing that, I'd also encourage you to do what we did and like identify specifically what the issue is. And then it's a lot easier for you to go to your parents or a teacher or dean, someone like that. Yeah. And from there, it's a lot, once you've identified the specific issue, it's a lot easier for them because if you go to the dean and like, I hate this teacher, like, yeah. end of comment, like, they can't really, they don't really have any, op- like there's not yeah. very many options available to them. Uh, but if yeah. you can explain specifically like what's wrong, it's much easier for them to like do something about it and, yeah. and turn them much more and likely I, to I do think, something. I think on that note as well with it, if you're going to, for, for the sake of the argument, say you, say you do plan on going to your dean mm. um, to um, put something forth about a teacher. Yeah. Um, just going up to a dean and saying, oh, I don't like so-and-so. Mm is a lot less um, constructive mm. than saying, oh, this is happening in class and it's not good. Yeah. Um, and you're going to be taken a lot more seriously because yeah. you've taken a considered approach to it mm. rather than just sounding like you've thrown the toys out the cart. Mm. You, uh, you've got a leveled kind of considered approach to it that you're going to be far more likely to be have taken seriously. And I know no, I agree. Um, at least in high school, teachers love to... Um, Give the teachers and all the admin and everything, they love to throw the statement, you're all adults now, at you. 
And so, like, you know, just play the card. Play, play that card, you know, man. Um, use that power that you guys have. Because I think mm. students quite often think that they don't have that power, but they 100% mm. do. Like, when I was in year 12, um, for our winter uniform, um, there was a bit of an uprising of all the yeah. girls who decided that they wanted, like, ankle socks or crew socks instead of, like, knee-high socks. And very edgy. It was, yeah, very, look, progressive. <laughs> anyway, um, and so all the girls, like, just started doing it, and then they made, like, a, like a kind of, a, they put forth some things to the school, and then they just officially changed the uniform to, like, yeah. lower socks, which sucked because there was so much colder. <laughs> there was so much colder. But, like, I get it, they do look better. I just wore tights, but... <laughs> But yeah, like you guys do have power. You Man, can that's do a real these high socks. That's a that's a real throwback, eh? Oh yeah, no, nah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. What? Who wears like socks like that these days? School, they had school uniforms, and like rugby players wear them. And that's about it. <laughs> I was wearing some last night. <laughs> Why? Why? Oh. Okay, we can move on now. Can we? Are you done? I think I'll, I think I'll be okay. I, I want you to wear the beanie like that for the rest of the yeah, I think I, I'm not sure if that's a very wholesome vibe. <laughs> so, yeah. Moving on, guys. Um, the next thing we wanted to talk about was um, also if you are having difficulties with like um, even parents or um, further on in the class, like rather than just your teachers, like maybe it's also your environment mm. that's really affecting you and yeah. um, the way that you're learning. And I think everyone kind of underestimates just how distracted they can get in class by sitting by your mates. And yeah. like everyone does it. Like it's not like a, you know, you're not going to be like the only person who sits by your mates. Like everyone does it. Mm. But it's actually insane. The, like the, it's, how much more work you can do on your own is crazy. And I think... Yeah. That doesn't mean don't sit with your mates, but it does mean that if you're easily distracted, maybe, maybe don't. don't. <laughs> yeah. If you're behind, maybe don't. Yeah. If you don't have awesome self-control, maybe don't. Yeah. But um, and I even, think for the most part, like it is fine, but I think you do need to recognise when you do have to knuckle down and do mm. work. Because at the end of the day, if you aren't going to do it in class... You generally have to do it in your own time which after often school. Doesn't which you want, yeah. Which, or you don't want to do. Yeah, like what you want to do even less. You know, at least use your class time to do the class things, and then you can not think about it later. You know, yeah, it's so no, much easier. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you just downed that. Yeah, mate. You gotta, gotta. That's why I drink black coffee. It's easier to drink than white coffee. You can drink it quite quickly. Easier Get to the chug. Caffeine. Tips. I'm not quite. I'm not quite on the you know like it's short black you know just the double shot level. I don't need that bit of dilution. But you know, maybe one day I'll just like down the espresso shot. Next next thing it'll be an IV drip of just caffeine. <laughs> I only have two coffees a day. I don't think it's. I don't think you have cut down. Day. Yeah, but I also had a coke no sugar today, and that's kind of caffeinated. So that's kind of like three, but that's kind of the limit, you know. Anyway. Anyway, um, yes, I think I think classmates um, is something that. It's we what, don't want it, to blame because mm, we, that's where we have yeah. fun. And, but I think definitely you need to recognise that power um, every now and then. Yeah, I reckon it's, it's definitely something to keep tabs on because I think it's one of the easiest things to forget. And even, yeah. like, you, you don't, like... You can do it strategically as well. Like you don't have to always not sit with your mates, but yeah, yeah. like sometimes you know you feel like you're getting behind, or you want to like really try to catch up this lesson. You know, yeah, try and mix it no, up. No, exactly. If your, if your teacher or whoever is all good with that, yeah, no, hundred yeah. percent. Um, do you think there's any other like common obstacles that um, come up and? The, um, like the normal high school learning environment. My actually, sorry, I, I want to throw in one thing before. I... Us. Okay. okay. Um, just because you were talking about like the classroom environment, one thing to think about as well is like literally like the physical space of the classroom and where you are. Yes. Yeah. I know like as someone who's short sighted and like can't see far away without glasses and yeah, I'm wearing glasses today, no, I'm not. Um, like being at the back of the room probably isn't going to work out that well. Yeah. If you struggle to hear things properly, being at the back of the room probably isn't going to work out that well. Um, so, like, just think about those things because you'd be surprised, like, how yeah. much more attention you pay just because, like, you're sitting closer to the front. And it's, like, not that you can't hear at the back. It's just easier to hear at the front. Yeah. And by virtue, you kind of just pay more attention yeah. that way. No, 100%. Yeah, I agree. 
Um, the only other kind of thing that I would think that students would potentially encounter that they might have a bit of trouble with, and I think this might be one of the more difficult ones to kind of deal with, mm. um, would be parents. Yeah. Um, and this can be for a multitude of reasons. Um, you know, it could be you feel like there's a bit too much pressure on you, um, or that you maybe aren't getting enough support, or um, something like that. And yeah, I, I do not uh, envy anyone who kind of has to deal with it because it is hard. Yeah. Um, but I think, again, having that clear, open communication, mm. and again, uh, like we said before, um, making an actual kind of like constructive argument to yeah. what you want and why you want it um, is is a good way to show parents that you can actually be taken seriously. Mm. Um, because if you, uh, so for example, last year I had a student um, who um, they had like a, a similar thing with their parent and quite often it just turned into a screaming match between them and that's obviously not going to be very constructive. Mm. And Absolutely. so my first piece of advice to her was, well, don't let it turn into that. Mm. Make your case, but don't let it turn into an argument. Mm. And communicate what you want and why you want it, like clearly and properly, and you, then you'll be taken seriously. Yeah. And I think that it really did help with the situation. Yeah. Um, and I think I think it is one of those things as well where it's sometimes difficult for parents to maybe take you seriously because mm. they do just always think of you as like, my baby. Oh, that sound is so good. <laughs> <laughs> High call, high call vocals. Um, but yeah, so that, that would be my advice on that front, but yeah. No, I reckon that's, that's definitely um, worthwhile. Cool. Considering. Awesome. A uh, couple of things before we move on to our very good questions this week. Uh, if you want to send us questions, please send us questions. Um, please. Send us a DM on Instagram or message on Facebook. It's, it's not very hard. I do think it's a pretty, you know, pretty, pretty easy thing to do, the cool. old the old, you know, go to the Instagram profile, send a message. I, a sent, message. I didn't used to send a lot of messages on IG, but now I do all the time. Yeah, it's still not, it's still not as good as Facebook Messenger for like personal messaging. Oh, no, 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 not at but all. But I feel like I end up doing it because what happens is you like share someone like something from Instagram. And, yeah. and then the chat just continues. Yeah. yeah. Instagram stories are like my favorite, like both as a consumer and as like a, like a producer of social media. Instagram stories are my favorite. Like I do love a good moment. IG story. Yeah. I really, really like That's IG why if you look at study, you can tell I spend like time on these. You see these like study time ones, but like the video replicated like three times on yes. the screen. I, yeah. I'm here for that. I really enjoy it. I love it. Anyway, <laughs> uh, one more thing is, this is the last week to enter the UE Boom competition. Um, get those study guides. Yeah. Um, they're awesome. They go through, we have them for level one, science, level two, biology, chemistry, and physics now. We have physics now, guys. And level three, chemistry, biology, and pre-orders are now available for level three statistics. So if you're doing that, you should totally get them. Studytime.co.nz slash store. Use the promo code UEBOOM at checkout and go into the drawer to win a UE Boom. This is the last week to do that. Um, so I'd highly recommend getting on Get Getting quick, guys. And it'll be, it'll be really good to get them in preparation for Mark. Yeah. So, yeah. Time to get in. And Do you it. Could, you could win. And UE you could get a UE boom. And you can, you know, listen, some, listen to some tunes while yeah, you're Yeah, listening to some so sick Baroque music to help you get in that study oh, vibe. Man. Yeah. It seems yeah. like everything that comes the, out my mouth this week is just very I actually watched very a very interesting you. video the other day on, like, how to appreciate classical music. I quite liked it. I also like some classical music, but, like, I don't mind classical stuff. music. Um, I don't mind some classical music, but I, I think I, I like cellos a lot. I really, really, really like cellos. Interesting. It's yeah. a tidbit about me. But. I'm not that fond of violins in general. They can be good, but I feel like a lot of the time they aren't. <laughs> Violinists everywhere are quaking. Cellos are quite good. Um, violins are a popular instrument. I've probably offended a lot of people. Uh, violins take a lot of skill to be able to play, and I think... To like, be able to play well. well. Yeah, 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 no, yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I was going to say is I think that um, if you can play the violin well, mm. you're like, you're, you're set. But yeah. getting to that point takes a lot of practice. Other good lot instruments, of... flutes, flutes are good instruments. Okay, yeah, see, I'm, how, uh, how you feel about violins is me and flutes. Right, you just need to play it, you need to play it properly, you know. <laughs> takes a lot, it's not easy, but... Some people can play them properly. Obviously not you. <laughs> My parents never tried living vicariously through me, so I've got no talents. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along. 
Uh, we got a message from Ethan on Facebook. What's up, Sweetie Tone? What's up, Ethan? Uh, so I'm a year 12 student who's looking to go to uni in the coming years. And however, I was just wondering what you have to endorse the whole, or do you have to endorse the whole year with merit or higher to go to uni? Or can you just endorse in certain subjects? Is that enough? What kind of marks do I need to get to uni? And this got me essentially what he's asking and what I thought we should talk about because I don't think we've talked about this in detail on the show is what you need to actually get done to get into university yeah. in New Zealand. We made a list. He made a list. I made a list. I didn't make it. Because it's really complicated yeah. and it confuses a lot of people. So this is everything you need to know. Before you dive in. About getting into, uh, getting into university in New Zealand. Do you want to keep yarning or do you want me to take over for a bit? Or? Uh, oh, I don't know. This doesn't take very long. Oh, no. We, oh, we we just, got... One of the cameras turns off after after half an hour of recording. You want, to, you want to know why? Here's a real fun fact. This is how you know I spend way too much time looking into camera stuff. The reason it happens is because in the European Union, there's a tax code that means if a camera films for more than 29 minutes and 59 seconds, it's classed as a video camera. A video camera is a tax higher than stills cameras. That's so interesting. It is infuriating that they stop after 20 hours. It's only that one. It's yeah, only it's, that one. It's, These the, one, two it's ones the, one that, the one that goes onto my face. Yeah. I, if you ever see it dip out halfway through, it's because yeah, the camera just stopped. No, but it's going again. Okay. Okay. Anyway, yeah, wait, I'm so sorry to everyone who. <laughs> I just can't. I'm so sorry. Three, okay, so there's three things you need to um, think about. So it's the, univer like the core university entrance criteria, the guaranteed entry score and any additional requirements for the specific degree you want to study. So the first thing, university entrance. Do you want to do this one? Because okay. you so, probably understand it better than me. <laughs> um, I'm still going to use this as a bit of a yeah. prompt. No, go for it. I will explain it as we go. Um, so you need 14 credits at level three in the university approved subjects. And so those are all on NCQA. You can check those out. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll throw the links to all the stuff we talk yeah. about because a lot of it would take us way too long to read yeah. out. So um, show notes, studytime.co.nz and you can find all the links for everything we talk about here. Yeah. Um, and then you need 10 literacy credits at level two. Yeah. Two, not, not level three. So, and this is why you can drop English at level three. Because and still get into UE, uh, university. Yeah. Um, because like that's what I did. Um, and then you also need ten numeracy credits, but you need these at level one. Yeah. So it's numeracy at level one, English at level two, and then at in level three, um, just three of the university approved subjects, fourteen credits in each of them. Yeah. So at level three, you need. I'm just going to go over those again. Level three, 14 credits in three different university approved subjects. Which is 28, 34, oh no, so 40, 42? 42 credits. 42 14 credits. in each out of three yeah. approved subjects. Um, and then the 10 literacy credits at ne level two, five of them have to be in reading and five of them have to be writing. They have to be in like specific, like only specific standards yeah. qualify for that. We'll throw a list of those um, in the thing. And 10 university credits at you level should, one. Yeah. Again, only certain standards meet those criteria, we'll throw a list of those again. Yeah, um, and the literacy, actually, just on that note, those, yeah. those literacy credits, um, you don't even necessarily need to get those from English. I actually yeah. think drama does a heap of them. Like, I think I know there's most people- There's a bunch of media studies standards yeah, there. I got the media, I think, I think even history. Some standards, there's a lot. Yeah, so it doesn't even necessarily need to be English, yeah. but if you're not taking it through English, um, I would take- he, Double, a more, a more triple check, yeah. yeah, just triple check that the standards that you'll be undertaking in your other courses um, will make sure that you get those credits. Yeah, I might also put a visual list of this on the website that's as well, um, just so you can triple check. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's the university entrance thing. So you need to meet that. That's like the first set of hoops yeah. you need to jump through. Then the hoop number two is the guaranteed entry score. So that's kind of the main thing that will tell you. Um, if you're going to get into university and then what courses you are able to get into at university. Hmm. So the way you calculate your guaranteed entry score is based on your level three results, not your level two, but you can, if you, you know, you can kind of, you can kind of guess based on how you performed on level two, like you can see, do I need to perform better next hmm. year? Do, have a, if I perform at this level again, will that be fine? So it's a good way to gauge it. But at level three, you take your 80 best credits only in university approved subjects. Again, we'll put the list for that online. 80 best credits, 
um, you can only credit 24 credits per subject. So yep. if you have a subject where you have 30 credits, only the best 24 would count. It's very unlikely that you're going to have subjects that you'll take more than 24 That's credits true. in. And bio level three, I took absolutely every standard that was available in biology level three. Hit me up. <laughs> and um, that was 24 credits total. Oh, yeah. So that was... That was a jam pack, yeah. yeah. So, and if you don't get eighty, you get so. If you have seventy, you get seventy. That's yeah, just how it is. And that's fine. Um, so you take your eighty best credits at level three, um, and then you apply for every excellence credit. You apply four points for every merit credit. You apply three points, and for every achieved credit, you apply two points. And you add those all together, and then you get your grant guaranteed entry score. So that's going to be a number like. 120, 150, 200, 250. It's gonna, there's yep. quite a wide range of them, yep. but that's kind of the well, range. Well, the maximum you could get would be 160 times two. 320. 320. Yeah. So and the maximum you could get with 320 points, that would be 80 excellence credits. Credits, yeah. Um, and then, so once you work that out, then go to the universe, go to the website of the university that you're interested in, or just Google like, guaranteed entry score and then just type the university and you should mm. really easily we'll chuck all these in the show notes but you should fairly easily find the page where mm. it says what guaranteed entry score you need for each course so i've got some examples here at victoria university to do a bachelor of arts or a bachelor of commerce you need a 150 points um, so if you get 150 or more you go you are guaranteed to get into a bachelor of and arts or bachelor like, of commerce if you, if you think about that if you have 80 achieved credits that's 160 points there. Yeah. So you can have 80 achieved credits yeah. and that's enough. And if you have even like a small amount of merit or excellence, it will like yeah, blow it up quite easily. Um, but then, so the biggest one I could find, the hardest course to get into based on the guaranteed entry score is a Bachelor of Science majoring in Biomed at Auckland that requires 280. So to get that, you're, you're looking at like pretty much straight excellences. That is, yeah, the, that like is the hardest course in the entire country. Is it? Yeah, that's the max guaranteed entry score. That yeah, but just because it's the max guaranteed entry well, score doesn't make it the hardest course. It's the hardest course to get into. Oh, hardest course. Yeah, yeah okay. So, I won't, I won't argue with yeah. it. Okay, yeah, cool. Um, okay, so that's that. So calculate your guaranteed entry score and yep. then look at um, what guaranteed entry score you need to get into or what guaranteed entry score you need to get into the program that you want to get into. Yeah. Last one. <laughs> um, some degrees, not all, but some degrees, especially more of the specialist uh, degrees, have other requirements that you need to meet. Yep. So again, you need to go to the university website, look at that specific course and see what the requirements for that are. I've done just some examples here. If you want to do engineering at Auckland, you need to have done all level, all three level three chemistry and calculus externals. Um, so if you want to do engineering at Canterbury, you have to do 14 level 3 credits in physics, calc, and chemistry, depending on your major. So it's kind of stuff like yeah. that. Um, so long story short, get UE, calculate your guaranteed entry score, see what... Your required your, papers are. See how, yeah, what the guaranteed yeah. entry score you need is, and see if there's any additional requirements you need to get into your thing. Um, just on that note, though, with... Um, the extra requirements and stuff because some of these are um, dependent upon your externals yeah. it actually means that you won't know, you won't know until yeah. about like January 7th which is quite daunting really yeah. um, but I've known people before who haven't actually made that before and I, I've talked about these a few times now but um, you can take bridging courses like a six week course yeah. before so the start of your course especially for the especially for those like additional requirements yeah there's like 14 credits and calculus and stuff yeah those can often be substituted with bridging courses yeah and the guaranteed entry score means that like if you get above that guaranteed entry score you will get into that course yeah um if you get below that you still might actually get in there's just no guarantee it depends on how many people there are that year etc yeah. etc et yeah so there's again like everything that we always talk about I think here, yeah. um, yeah. there's nothing that means you can never do so bad that you can never do what you want to do. Yeah. Um, you might have to just take an alternative route. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Hopefully that answers your question, Ethan. Yeah. Um, 
I know for... Hopefully, yeah, so we'll have like a summary of that on the website because yeah. I know that's like a lot of information But like taken. all this information is available online yeah. as well. Like it probably didn't take you that long to research. It took me about it. 10 minutes to find yeah. that out. That's it's, just like, it's just like so many little boxes you have to take and if yeah. you like don't tick one, it's like all of it. That's yeah. like how it feels sometimes. But um, yeah, just, just, yeah, I think... In advance, be be aware in advance of what you have to do and where you have to be, um, because if you kind of fumble around for ages and just think, "Oh, I hope I'm doing the right yeah. things," like you might be, but you also might not. Be. Especially little things like those numeracy credits. It's one of those things you can easily get over and done with that level yeah. one. They never have to think about it again. But if yeah. you don't do it, it's going to bite you, and then it's, it's going to bite you later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, We've got one more question today, also related to this whole kind of university application yep. thing, because I know a lot of people are going through that at the moment. Yeah. And um, it's from Elsie on Instagram. I think that's how you say that. Uh, Kia ora. Tips for writing personal statements for university hall applications. I think it could benefit a lot of year 13s, and I also agree. I think it could yeah, no, a lot of year definitely. 13s. I, I actually think this is something that would be useful for us to uh, study time in general to maybe address in a different yeah. kind of format as well later on. Um, but doing a hall of residence applications is a bit of a pain um, from memory. But um, I can't really talk. I never yeah, he, he never went into a hall, so this is this is where you have to listen to my terribly chapped and broken voice. Sorry, team. Um, but the personal, the what are they called? Personal, personal, statement. sta- personal statements is a little bit like I wrote mine almost like a little bit of a cover letter. Yeah. Um, like you would for a job. Um, and when you're applying for halls of residence, it's not just your personal statement. They also look at your level two grades yeah. and your school also. Um, the common confidential reference. No, I'm getting confused. I don't even know what it's called. Common confidential it. reference form, CCRF. That's what it's called. Okay. That's one thing I picked up in year 13 when I listened uh, to the deans around it. All, a lot about yeah, stuff. all we were told is that like our dean or principal or whoever um, will also send off like a reference for you. So yeah. you have a reference from, oh, not a reference from you. You make a personal statement, your school gives a reference, and um, it also goes off your grades. Yeah. Now, if you've got like a merit or an excellence endorsement, you're, I don't want to say like guaranteed, because you've got, much better odds. you've got a very high chance of getting your first pick of halls. Um, and then, mind you, this is a level two that it's basing it off. So, like, I got my first pick of halls. Yeah. Um, and it also very much does depend on the, um, per, uh, the statement from your school. Yeah. So um, just make sure... I know sure. a lot of schools will let you choose... Like, if the dean's writing it and they don't know you, a lot of schools will let you like suggest which teachers the um, oh, okay. dean's talk to. I know that's how I know that's yeah. how it worked at my school, so choose um, carefully. But it's um, also it is something that you kind of have to do. Like your school mm. might say like, you know, we're available to do it, but you have to You have approach. to make sure it gets done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because um, otherwise they might just assume, you know, you, maybe you're not going to uni or maybe you're thinking taking a gap year or something like that. Um, and so then they're not gonna chase you up about it. So you do mm-hmm. have to be proactive about it. Um, but writing the personal statement, it's um, from from memory. I might have to go back and like critique this in the next episode. Yeah. But um, it's kind of like a, who you are as a person. Yeah. Um, and maybe what you're planning on studying, what you've studied before, the kind of things you're involved with. It's really kind of like an idea of like um, who you are as a person. Yeah. Um, and it isn't fully dependent on. Um, actually, like your grades or um, like things like that. The, the personal statement is where you kind of do want to express some level of personality um, and be like, I guess, communicative and like um, open and just wanting to like be kind of friendly and stuff about it. Yeah. But I think the best advice that I was given is to sort of write it as a bit of a cover letter. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I might might have to go back and have a yeah. look at. I think we'll try to do an article or something on this. Yeah. but that's definitely a good um, good starter. Yeah, for you. yeah. Sorry, sorry, I couldn't do could give you more information on sorry, it. Sorry, I couldn't tell you anything because I'm useless. I could I could maybe go for a deep dive. Might be able to find mine somewhere. Ooh, ooh, can we do like a critique? Oh God, no. We could we could bring our boss in and we'll like sit around the table and have a little uh, just have a cheeky corner all about it. She'll be right. Be great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Awesome, uh, guys. Thanks for listening. We've been going, I think we've been going for about 40 minutes now. So. A wholesome half hour has turned into a bit more of a wholesome, wholesome three quarters of an hour. Yeah, right? but, you know, that doesn't have the same ring to it. It doesn't. It doesn't Imagine roll if we could talk for an hour. I think we could. We I genuinely could. think we could. Probably at the cl- end of the year, we'll probably. I think we'll, we'll probably end up doing longer streams yeah. at the near the end of the year because mm. I think we'll probably have a lot more questions and stuff yeah. like that. Thanks yeah. so much for watching. Thanks, if you have a guys. question for next week, please send us a message. We love to yeah. hear it. And yeah, yeah, have fun. Stay wholesome, team. Stay wholesome. Kaki Bye. You this week on the wholesome. Oh, ha- what? Oh, sorry. <laughs> what? So sorry, I wasn't ready. Oh, okay. You? Okay, I'm ready. I'm coming.